this is Deidre and Lowell here at Italian Cowboy in Rockport, Fulton, Texas, and today's class is all about Parmigiano Reggiano. Often called the king of Italian cheeses, Parmigiano Reggiano is practically synonymous with Italian cooking. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how Parmigiano Reggiano is made, where it comes from, and how it differs from Parmesan. We're also going to give you guys a one ingredient recipe we think y'all will really love and do a couple quick wine pairings. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our resident cheesemonger, Lowell, who's going to talk a little bit about the difference between a Parmigiano Reggiano, which we have here, and a, a Parmesan. And the difference is they're completely different cheeses. Don't confuse Parmigiano Reggiano with Parmesan. Um, in the EU, they don't even um, allow cheeses to be labeled Parmesan because they're confused with Parmigiano Reggiano, and they're completely different. Parmigiano Reggiano is an ancient cheese going back centuries. It's made with three ingredients, raw cow's milk, salt, and a coagulant, and that's it. Uh, it actually takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to make Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, the dairies are within 45 minutes of the uh, place where they make the cheese because the cheese is never, I'm sorry, the milk is never refrigerated. Uh, the cows uh, eat a specific diet in a specific region in Italy. Uh, and then most importantly for us, the cheese is then aged, certified, and inspected. And so the cheese has to at least be 12 months old to be Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, and the cheese that we carry is 24 months old. And that's important for a couple of reasons. One is the resulting flavor is much more complex. That age gives it a lot of time to mature, to get those cute, those great little flavor crystals that are in there. Tyrosine. Tyrosine crystals, mm -hmm. thank you, scientists. Mm -hmm. um, and also to form this shardy texture, you see we've already sort of sharded off some uh, here that just is incomparable. Also, the cheese loses a lot of moisture over time. The wheels start out at 100 pounds. They lose about 11% of their weight the first year and 7% the next year. They end up at about 80 pounds. And so one of the reasons Parmigiano Reggiano is more expensive than other similar cheeses is because they're losing moisture and they're intensifying the flavor. So Parmigiano Reggiano is a completely different cheese. And you can tell when you have Parmigiano Reggiano, and I'll point right here, you won't be able to see it, but we've taken a picture, we'll put it up on the website. Parmigiano Reggiano has little words on the side that they put in when they're making the cheese that say Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, and they're inspected and certified before they can be released. So Parmigiano is frequently inspected. Um, there's significant quality control. Um, and so you know that you are getting uh, an assurance. It's, it's like many products coming out of Italy. Many of the cheeses that have protected uh, DOP products. Exactly. And Parmesan in the U.S. for the vast majority of it um, has no aging requirement. They can use all sorts of additives, colorants. They can um, use dry skim milk, and powdered skim milk and water to reconstitute it. And so you end up with a cheese that has much less flavor and it is frankly just not even the same cheese. Right, it's why you don't get that um, intense umami flavor. And um, a lot of times in some, you know, there's a wide variation. Uh, domestic Parmesan is almost a generic kind of term these days for a uh, cow's milk Italian inspired hard cheese or but it's um it it's certainly there's a wide variation in quality you can have a uh, cellulose in it yeah I um, mean that would not be uh permissible in a true Parmigiano Reggiano uh but again to Lowell's point that's why it is going to be more expensive um you do see that that cost difference but uh per ounce you get a lot more of that umami flavor which, as a result, means that we will put it on a cheese plate. It is fantastic. We love pairing it with a fruity red wine. Um, you know, this is a great Barbera from the Piedmont. Uh, you could also, as you know, we love bubbles. And so you could go with something like a Lambrusco, which is a dry, it's not sweet, but a dry, fizzy red, lots of fruit. The bubbles help cleanse the palate. But it's got a salty nuttiness that just really goes with almost anything. The same way that a salted nut goes with almost any wine, Parmigiano Reggiano goes with almost any wine, and it's just delicious to eat out of hand, have with a glass of wine. Indeed. And I'm gonna have a glass of wine while Deidre tells you about our one ingredient recipe. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, you have that chunk of Parmigiano Reggiano sitting in your, your fridge um, and you say, well, what do I do with it? And and, you know, a lot of people think, okay, you know, you take it, you grate it over red sauce and spaghetti. But the truth is there's so much more you can do with Parmigiano. Um, we typically will take maybe uh, grate a little Parmigiano over some pasta with a high quality olive oil, toss it with some veggies, um, maybe some beans and make a, a sauce just with the cheese and the olive oil. In addition, one of our favorite recipes that we've always used for entertaining is freak out. And all you need to do is take Parmigiano Reggiano, grate it up, take about a tablespoon, put it on a, a pan, and we would recommend uh, using a silk pad or a, um, uh, a parchment, parchment paper. paper, otherwise it's gonna stick and be a complete mess. But um, you, take, you take your little tablespoon, put a little scoop of the Parmigiano that's grated on that sheets on top of the sill pad or parchment um, and then bake it at about 350 to 350 degrees for 10 minutes. And let it, when it comes out, go ahead and let it cool. Don't take it off the pan right away. And you will be left with these wonderful, delicious, crispy little crackers. Um, they're a very uh, popular traditional Italian snack um, and of course they're gluten-free, one ingredient, um, fun for snacking and a great, uh, a great entertaining idea, especially if you have folks coming over who maybe don't eat gluten or have other dietary constraints. It's fun and also really delicious. So um, just a quick tip on how to use that Parmigiano beyond just the typical kind of red sauce spaghetti dish. And since we would be uh, not complete without talking about the most, one of the most important things, which is you have this beautiful piece of Parmigiano, how do you store it? You don't want it to go bad, you know? And what we would recommend is most people do store in baggies or uh, saran wrap. We don't recommend doing that, but if you do, make sure that like any cheese, you rewrap every week because that cheese has to breathe. Instead, like many of you know in the store, we use cheese paper and um, recommend these little cheese bags. Um, many of you have seen them in the store um, and those are a great, they're actually reusable if, you, if they're with like a Parmigiano um, and uh, they help the, the cheese last for a very long time. Yeah, they're and, a two-ply bag that has paper on the inside, a little plastic on the outside, allows it to breathe, mm -hmm. but not too much, so it doesn't dry out, but it uh, doesn't also suffocate the cheese. Right, right. Well, you know, you've invested money in your cheese. You want it to last. It's, it's one of the questions we get asked in the store quite frequently is how to, how to store the cheese. So we want to make sure to mention that while, uh, while we're talking about Parmigiano. And there's so much more we could say today about Parmigiano Reggiano um, and do a deep dive into the, the requirements um, that the consortium requires. But what we wanna do is just give you a flavor for uh, what it is and- um, Encourage and, you to go out and buy a real piece um, of Parmigiano Reggiano. Don't buy Parmigiano. Yeah, and that you'll definitely see the difference and, um, and that that it is a it is a different product when you get a true Parmigiano Reggiano coming out of Italy and what that means. Again, it's a question we get asked a lot. Um, so I think we are going to just enjoy a lovely glass of wine with some Frico here. I think so. I think it sounds delicious. So with that, I'm gonna have a little snack here. Chin chin, honey. Chin chin. Thanks chin, for chin. stopping by. Thanks so much, y'all. Mm, that's delicious. Salty. Salty. Salty goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should definitely make these.